Hello all. I'm Archana Guzwani, Assistant Professor, Computer Engineering Department at AISSMS Institute of Information Technology. In this video, we are going to see what is the pole chart or network diagrams. Okay, so we'll start with that. First of all, what is a pole? Pole stands for the program evaluation and review technique. That is a pole chart. It is mainly so it is one of the visualization tool for the project management, software project management. So what is that exactly? So PERT is a network analysis technique used to estimate the project duration when there is a high degree of uncertainty about individual activity duration estimates. Obviously, we need to first estimate the activity duration, but that activity durations are there is a too much of uncertainty in that. So we can validate it with the help of the PERT chart. We can make the more uh, closer activity duration estimates, which can be a realistic estimates you can say so pulp is a probabilistic model it uses the probabilistic time estimates so duration estimates based because why it is the probabilistic time estimate because here in the power chart we use the three point scale we use the three point estimate or the three point scale so we take the values on the optimistic time estimate pessimistic time estimate as well as the most likely time estimate for every activity and then we sum up these all the things and we find out the average of this so that average will be the uh, actual estimate of the or uh, realistic estimate on the particular activity. So what is the three point estimate is here? So instead of providing activity estimate as a discrete number, instead of providing as a one number only a discrete number, such as the four weeks uh, or eight weeks or the four days is required for the particular activity. Instead of that, it's often helpful to create a three point estimate. So an estimate that includes a pessimistic, most likely and optimistic estimate such as the three weeks for the optimistic, four weeks for the most likely, and five weeks for the pessimistic estimate. So we can average out all these three times together and we can find out some realistic number. Okay, so th these three point estimates are needed for the first simulations. So we'll see the example of this per particular uh, three point estimate here. So you can see that the formula for the uh, three point estimate is optimistic time plus Four most likely. Here we are taking the four most likely means more four multiplied by most likely, one pessimistic and one optimistic divided by six. So this is the formula for the three point estimate. So now we'll take the example. Suppose our optimistic time is eight days, most likely time is ten days, and pessimistic time is twenty four days. So if we put up the values together here in this formula, so we get the twelve days. So therefore we can say that we use the 12 days on the network diagram instead of 10 when using the PERT for this example, for this particular activity, you can see. Okay, instead of, because most likely time is 10, but instead of having the using the 10 days, we can average it out using this formula and the uh, whatever the value we are getting here, that is a 12 days, so that we'll use as a uh, estimate for the particular activity. Activity sequencing. Network diagrams are preferred techniques for showing the activity sequencing. What are the relationship between the activities? So a network diagram is a schematic display of the logical relationship among or sequencing of the project activities. Different project activities we can sequence, we can show the logical relationship among them. So for drawing the network diagrams or for creating the network diagrams, there are two main form, two main formats are there. The first one is the arrow diagramming method, that is the ADM. And second one is a precedence diagramming method, that is a PDM. Now we'll discuss these two methods. Okay, so before discussing these two methods, we need to first of all uh, understand as the network diagram shows us the, the helps us to display the sequencing or relationship among the different activities or tasks. So what are the different activities or dependencies among the tasks are there? So there are the task dependency types are there, four dependency type task dependency types are there. You can see here, the first one is a finish to start. So task B cannot start until the task A finishes. Second task dependency start to start means the task B cannot start until the task A starts. The third relationship is finish to finish. That is a well, task B cannot finish unless and until the task A finishes its task. A can start at any time, but it has to be finished before the B finishes. And the last one that is a start to finish. So here, the task B cannot finish until task A starts. Okay, so these are the four types of the task dependencies which we can show with the help of the network diagram. 
So now we'll see the both formats of the network diagram. The first one is the arrow diagramming method, that is the ADM, also called as activity on arrow network diagrams. So here activities are represented by arrows. So that's why we call it as an activity on arrow. On arrow, we are giving the activity description. Okay, so nodes or circles are the starting and ending points of the activities here. And can and there is one drawback of this particular method is that it can only show the finish to start dependency. As we have seen, the four types of dependencies are there, but this arrow diagramming method can only show the finish to start dependency. We'll see one example for this. So here is the example of the arrow diagramming method that is the ADM. So you can see here that the nodes or circles are uh, the starting and ending points for the activities. For example, we'll see that the first activity A is here. It is starting at node 1 and it is ending at node 2. So on the arrow, we can see here the A is the activity with equals to 1 means what the duration for this activity is 1. Same way now, the activity B is also starting at 1, but it is ending at 3. And B is equals to 2 means the duration for B is. So this is the example of network diagram using the arrow diagramming method. You can see here all the arrows uh, connecting to the nodes and each arrow is having their own description of the activity along with the duration. The next method is the precedence diagramming method. Here activities are represented by boxes and arrows show the relationship between the activities. Here we can show all the four types of the task dependency relationship. So both popular, this method is more popular than the ADM that is arrow diagramming method and used by the project management software. And it is better at showing different types of dependencies. All four types of dependency we can show over here. This is the example uh, PDM network diagram. You can see here, we can specify here the activity in the node and the arrows are showing the sequencing between those activities or those tasks. So here in this node, you can describe the activity name, the start date, finish the quarter, the resolution, pass the particular activity. So these are all the things you can add over here into this nodes and you can um, attach these nodes with each, to each other with the sequencing relationship by the apps. So that is about this. So thank you.